Well, greetings again, everyone. It's me, Nick Mike Like, and the stunning Steve <laughs> Fraser. Oh, that's a new one. I like it. Thank yes, you. Thank and, you. Uh, Hello. We're giving you a 30th anniversary commentary for Cliffhanger, because we like some Stallone. Yeah, absolutely. We like Rennie Arlen. Yes, we do. It's a good marriage. They, so, yeah. Yeah. So, guys, if you got your own copy of Cliffhanger, we're watching the 4K edition from Sony. But get your timestamp over to zero and turn your subtitles to follow along, and we'll get going with the countdown. So, guys, in three, two, one. Play. Ah, <sighs> oh, the old TriStar. Mm hmm. The old Pegasus. For some reason, I thought it was a unicorn. It's not. Mm hmm. 35 years of my life, I've thought that that thing had a horn on its head. <laughs> it doesn't. Shocking. <laughs> <clears throat> like, I've legit called it. The unicorn. Hmm. Carol Co. Mm hmm. R.I.P. Still, still sticking with him. We all did the, the Rambo films together. What else did they do? Anything? Uh, other stuff they did. They, they, oh, well, they, uh, right. <laughs> they did Terminator 2, Universal Soldier. I th I'm pretty sure they did Total Recall. Renny Arlen gets his name and, before the uh, title. I think they did Red Heat with uh, Schwarzenegger as well. So they had a good run. Good run, yeah, until they did Cutthroat Island and it went completely <clears throat> bankrupt. A lot of good uh, cinematography in this. Okay. Too. Yeah, yeah. Really gives you a uh, a sense of just, I don't know, isolation and also yeah. height. Height. Yeah. Like, even the fact that that helicopter shot was above the other one, uh -huh. you're like, you're like looking, oh, Leon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whoever the hell that is. You're just looking down on a helicopter. You're like, oh, shit. I must yeah. be up really high. Yeah. <clears throat> Dennis with one S, Forrest with one. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, Paul Winfield. Great actor. Frank. Frank doesn't have a last name, it's just Frank. <laughs> Linwood. Can, how in the world would anybody even get up there? <laughs> no clue, man. Like, I get that you need rescuing. Yeah. But, aside from an, a helicopter, how do you get somebody up there? Right. Now, are these... <clears throat> Like, that's not CGI, right? Like, oh, the, no, no. Everyone's right up there. Like, those are actual True people. life. Actual people on an actual oh, yeah. rock in the actual oh, yeah. eight, eight miles in the air or whatever the fuck. <clears throat> and still apparently had a fear of heights. <laughs> so he well, tried to conquer him on this film. Oops. I don't know how, how far he got on that. He had a lot of... Climbers and stunt doubles for them. <laughs> well, that doesn't look like a stunt double. No, it ain't. Just can you imagine? Oh, I just no. I don't like. I don't like heights myself. Like I. Like what? I can't. The, I can't <laughs> deny the scenery of just utterly breathtaking, but I couldn't. What? What? Where's the safety net here? <laughs> right. I mean. I mean that's all practical photography there. That ain't the. There's there's some effect shots here and there in the film, but that definitely ain't it. That's that's the real deal stuff. I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. How or why anybody would even want to be there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm 
<laughs> Some of this, like, that looks real. That's real, yeah. Her driving is clearly, like, yeah, you know, sounds green, stagey. green yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> They're not hanging a camera outside the front of the copter. Right. <laughs> I I don't know what their costuming is, but I would have to be wearing darks because <laughs> you'd be pissing yourself hard. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd need a change of shorts from all directions. <laughs> <clears throat> this is uh, what a way to make an opening statement, right? Oh yeah, this this whole sequence just gets unbelievably good. And why is it that they can't just drop a line to that flat? That's the thing flat. I was wondering. I was watching it the other day. I was like, you can't just drop the line straight the, down and have, just tow them up? I don't know. There, once again, we have a screenplay by somebody and Stallone together. Right, and... <clears throat> I don't know if we pass it right. There's a weird credit saying... You know, we must pass it saying, based on a premise by. Okay. Because apparently... So that's different than story by? Well, apparently they, they bought the screenplay off of another guy, but apparently there are two other people who stepped forward saying, hey, we have, have evidence that we actually originated the story that this guy based the, the original screenplay on. So you also have to pay and credit us for stuff on top of him. So there's like an unusual credits because they have screen story written by then based on a premise by. So it's like there's three different layers of people developing the ideas for this screenplay. Now, apparently there were like like two or three other films that were kind of circling around at this point in time for Stallone because originally it was going to be something called Gale Force where it's also it was also be Rennie Harlan directing directing it from the same production company where it's like they're, they're like Stallone in a coastal town fighting off like modern pirates in the middle of a hurricane interesting <clears throat> well, they felt like, oh, this is going to be too expensive. We really can't do the effects. Hardly they would know that. The, the $40 million, they thought that thing was going to cost. It would cost about double as much money to make this movie. Right. Then there was, this one was weird. I, 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 I don't even know if you can picture this. Stallone and John Candy in a John Hughes written film. Yeah, I heard about, I'm, so I've I, known about that one. Yeah, some kind of comedy films, like, I'd, I'd watch it. Well, of course. <laughs> I would have watched it. Of course. John Candy is the greatest actor that ever lived. <clears throat> and there was some Roland Emmerich film that was going to be like some futuristic sci-fi flick where there's like this genetically engineered monster out there or something like that. And they would have Sloan <clears throat> in it as well. But then all that stuff just didn't happen and they just had to make this instead. Yeah. I mean, not that this is a bad choice. Oh, no, I'm just saying, it, those are all fascinating choices. <clears throat> I think there's an entire Wikipedia page dedicated to John Hughes stuff that never even got mm. made. I uh, I do remember reading about that at some point. Um, the Candy-Stallone combo... <laughs> Which, you know, I guess was kind of, that's fine. I mean, you team, yeah. you can team John Candy up with anybody. Sure. <clears throat> just why that Stallone comedies just never work. Well, usually not, no. He, he does, he, you see him in other stuff that, the dramas, stuff, action stuff. He could do lighthearted, he can do some funny stuff, but if you want to dedicate comedy, it's a little too cheeky. Right. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. By the way. Yeah, this... And that That is some... Um, I think they were using a, sort of a, a rear screen projection uh, format for doing a lot of these effect shots instead of doing, like, straight green screen stuff. Right. At least, at least on this 4K, they, you can't even pick it up. But... <clears throat> but 
this is a hell of an incredible sequence. I mean, they're shooting a lot of this stuff, like, right there as you're seeing it. I don't even know... <clears throat> how do you get insurance to make this kind of movie? Well, there, there was at least one time. It might have been this, this sequence here where... <sighs> I don't know if they couldn't get insurance or the studio wouldn't pay for it, but Sloan actually took a pay cut in order to pay the stuntman, cover him for the insurance or something like that, for a million dollars. Okay. He took a million dollars out of his own pay to cover the cost to make sure this happened. And he did it, apparently did it a couple of times for some of the reshoots on the film. They kind of pony up the money so they can make it because, again, he had done, he'd just done a couple of comedies that went nowhere. And... There were a lot of there's a lot of problems with the original cut of the film because apparently well not, another one that was going to get like an NC-17 rating because it was getting too overblown with with action and, and stuff here and there right <clears throat> and there are a couple of sequences in the original cut because there is a work print out there somewhere okay it runs I don't know how much longer but it runs substantially longer with some additional deleted footage where just some of the stunts were way too overblown. So you're you're having like Stone's character doing like a a three hundred foot jump straight okay, across sure. a canyon or something like it just wasn't functioning well. So they had to trim a lot of stuff out to kind of maintain the re- realism of the drama. But oh, just this. Oh my God, I know this whole sequence. I mean, I usually this happens at that, the end that, of the movie, right? That was a little uh, Nakatomi Plaza a little, for me. Little, yeah, yeah, a little Alan Rickman on there, yeah. <laughs> but, but look at that fall. Well, I mean, th- this is... That's a mannequin, but, you well, know, whatever. So still. watching this, is like, this, this has got to be one of the best <clears throat> action movie openings ever done. See, in the Die Hard films, they don't start out hot very much. They don't start... They start with kind of character stuff, plot building up. They don't start with a major action sequence. That that's just blows me away, that whole sequence. It's just out of, out of control, man. You don't and, you don't expect that type of peril to hit right at the beginning of the movie. Right, right. That's like you said. That's definitely like climax. Yeah. The buddy. old the old Denver Mint. <laughs> Love the Denver Mint. Making money. How do we run out of money? You <laughs> can just print more. Just print more. I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody explain economics to me because I don't get it. <laughs> <clears throat> That guy is 90s cop all the way. Yeah, absolutely. The mustache all the way. And Paul Winfield, man, fantastic actor. I think he passed about 20 years back. Oh, really? That yeah. long ago? Yeah, maybe 03, 05, something like that. Uh, mustache has been in other things, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Usually playing this kind of role. Mm-hmm. $1,000 bills, did he say? <laughs> Is that really what he said? <laughs> $1,000 bills? Bills. Yeah, Bruce McGill back there, he's also amazing. This guy? The chubby guy? Yeah, the one, the other mustache guy. He was, uh... <clears throat> Or the courtroom scene in The Insider that he's the one chewing out Wings Hauser. Okay. When uh, Wygan's going to take the stand. Okay, yep, make yep. A statement. Yeah, sure. he's the one. Yep. Yeah. Incredible actor. I've seen him. <clears throat> he was a Mac- MacGyver. He had a, ro- he had a guest role in Miami Vice. He was also in uh, Collateral. He's an FBI agent in Collateral and a bunch of other stuff. He's just slam bang amazing actor who are these two idiots <laughs> apparently he knows them <laughs> <clears throat> he uh it's weird how <laughs> that's Rambo and Rocky <laughs> yeah. but it doesn't you don't buy that it's either one of those no, guys. No, no. 
And speaking of which, he just came off of Rocky Five as well, which didn't do a whole lot of business. No, that one, that one's not very good. Yeah, he think he doesn't <clears throat> think very highly of that one. I mean, I don't think it's that bad of a movie. It's just not as good as. Yeah, it's a little. You can see where he's going for it. It just lost a lot of steam on it. He went way too overblown with, with Rocky IV. And it's a little hard to come back down to earth after that, and it just didn't quite have as much. Look at this scenery. Pertinence to it. It's very first blood. Uh, yeah. Are these two supposed to be an item? To a degree, yeah. She was the chopper pilot. Oh, I know. Yeah. <clears throat> I like horses. Mm-hmm. I want to ride a horse. I only officially, like, rode a horse one time mm. in Rocky Mountain National Park. No. Right, well, just minutes away from the uh, the Stanley Hotel, which mm. <clears throat> serves as the uh, inspiration for The Shining. Mm. I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if you could really come back from that kind of guilt. I don't know. Yeah, Just, I don't know. I get that she's, like, it's almost like it's written a little too non-empathetic on her end. Like, she's basically saying, get over it. Yeah, a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we're all going through it, why don't you just man up? Hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. I I feel like... Yeah. I think it's more the fact that you ran out on everyone while we tried to stay here and maintain something or whatever. That's fair. Now, I don't... I understand him maybe not wanting to, like, work with Hal again. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't Hal be the one to want to go away, not him? Mm -hmm. Granted, maybe they, both maybe. Have, they both have a case. Yeah, it's all a matter of how you want to work through the grief. Right. You can see it from Stone's character's point of view. is like, I don't think I earned the right to be around here anymore. I don't love her haircut, but mm. she does have something about her. Yeah. If you live there, why would you ever just get up and leave? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. Look at that view. Yeah. Ice blue, mountain rapids. Yeah. I guess they had to change out the cinematographer at the last minute because the it was going to be the same guy who shot Die Hard 2 Adventures of Ford Fairlane for Rennie, Oliver Wood. But I guess because Karoko was having so many financial troubles that caused some sort of delays or something else like that or whatever the case was happening, so they had to switch over to Alex Thompson who had uh, he shot <clears throat> Legend for Ridley Scott, he shot Alien 3 and a couple other things. So... I guess Rennie said they didn't really get along because he didn't want to follow his storyboards. I don't, know okay. how you, I don't know how you function on that regard. And now, did the first guy film some of this and then the second no, guy took the, over? the trivia I read said he departed a few weeks before production began. Okay. Because <clears throat> I thought it might be interesting to try to decide who yeah. shot what. That's a fun game. Yeah, but both guys are really phenomenal cinematographers. I don't know if Oliver Wood worked 
extends beyond my device. So the, you know, Miguel might have actually worked on the same episode. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. Of a rooker here, man. Yeah, he's uh, he's a, he's a good. He's, fo- he's a force. He's something. Oh yeah. He's been in a hundred things. And... Oh yeah, he's great in everything. <clears throat> Apparently, real cool guy. Yeah. I friend of Bert's uh, set, set. Seen him at a couple cons here and there. Yeah, I think he's. I don't know if he's most known for The Walking Dead, but he he was on that show. Has for... got him a lot of traction. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it was his first, not first, but it was a one, one of the biggest ma- roles, mainstream yeah. things. Yeah, <clears throat> Everybody went from going, I think I know that guy, yeah, to yeah, yeah. I know his name is Michael Rooker. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I know this guy, the, the oh, chubby, yeah. chubby stash. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in a million things. No, you know. <laughs> Weird that he's got like a fucking Tech Nine or something like that on him. But I like it so much because I've and the guy the the guy with the guns on him right now. I've seen him every time I see that actor. He's playing the duplicitous, sleazy type of character, so he casts him really well here. Because it not he doesn't end up being that, but you kind of plan the expectations if you've seen him a couple of times. Right. Oh shit. <clears throat> ah, sorry guys. Mm-hmm. Now that's good blood. Oh yeah. And he's a he's a mole because right he works inside. Hmm. They put wheels on that thing? <laughs> no, it probably weighs God knows how much. I looked up some trivia one, or I read some trivia one time. Mm-hmm. I didn't look it up. And I don't remember the exact what it is, but like a million dollars in $100 bills mm-hmm. actually doesn't weigh that much mm-hmm. because it's, I don't know, <clears throat> I think it's like under 50 pounds. Okay. I don't remember what it is, and I'm probably being an ass for even bringing it up without having the answer in front of me. I seem to remember this sequence here on the back of the airplane. Yeah. It's been a it's been a while since I've watched this. Yeah. It's a little Bond esque to a degree. Yeah, I get that. This is the type of sequence that would open a Bond film. Yeah. Or Dark Knight Rises, as we've been into. <laughs> right. Anytime you have two moving vehicle vehicles in or in space, mm-hmm. you know, it, yeah, you're kind of limited, but also they're really great. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this film cost seventy million dollars back then. Yeah, no Which shit. You should check. Oh, seventy million was the budget. <laughs> yes, the reported budget is probably more than that. I bet. What am I putting down? Nineteen ninety. Uh, ninety-three. Oh, that's right. Thirty-year anniversary. And did you say seventy or seventy-five? Seventy. Seven zero. All right, so we're a little more than double. It's one forty-six two. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd buy that. Yeah. I mean, 
movies this day and age, that's that's nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's 146 million more than I have. <laughs> Not to say that I have the 200, so no, I don't. It's a 146.2 more than I have. <laughs> What an interesting rig they got yeah. here with the the ropes and the. Well, that's definitely a, like a blue screen shot there. It's yeah. Little, little blown out, washed out. <laughs> but that's I'd, not. I'd like to do that stunt. No thanks. I'd like to do any of the stunts in this movie. <laughs> no thanks. Look at this shit. Yeah. That's an actual airplane uh -huh. with actual uh -huh. people. Great line. Yeah, I like, I like this dynamic between Trevor's and, and Quail in here. It's like, <clears throat> I really don't trust you because you're probably going to kill me at some point anyway. So. <laughs> That's those, usually how it goes. Those kinds of lines are actually very Stallone. Yeah. I think that he, he writes those kinds of quippy dialogue uh -huh. very well. <clears throat> All you can mm -hmm. see is a mustache through the... Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh Goodbye. Uh -oh. oh, what a beautiful thing. <laughs> that does not look like a mannequin. Definitely not. What? I mean, what a cool idea. Yeah. Right? Whoever thought of this idea, whether it be the written by, story by, or <laughs> I concept Prime by, spy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoever came up with carabiner uh, right. suitcases is uh, fun. That's that's good. Oh, there goes, there goes that. <clears throat> oh, there you go. There's your hospital. <laughs> Airlift. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Look out. Wherever the red light goes. Oh, there you go. You bang. That's a Rennie Harley explosion. It was very CGI, but that's fine. A little, yeah, a little on the... It's fine. It's a little, a little wash out again. A little... Composite's not great. It's fine. I'm I'm it's okay fine. with it. It looked great. Yeah, this whole sequence is really fun. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's uh that's not good. No. Not good. <laughs> no, that's not good either. <laughs> yeah, not good. going all over the place like that. Not good. <laughs> and if you're not careful, there's going to be a mountain on the other side of those clouds. Mhm. Mm Oh, there it is. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the snowstorm. <clears throat> Brace for impact. Mm hmm. Whew. I don't know if it would be that, uh... Probably a couple of miniatures in here, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's not I, bad. I don't think it Pretty. would be that, uh, intact. Hmm. Oof. Oh. Not good. The miniatures are doing, doing very well. They're not showing their... Showing themselves at all. 
Yeah, I don't know how you would do this if it wasn't miniature. Yeah, I, you're not going to do this full scale. No way. These two idiots. <laughs> <clears throat> These two are like 100% X Games, 90s. Yeah. Everything. Radical man. <laughs> I don't think Sloan wrote these guys. I feel like you're right. <laughs> that must have been uh, yeah, the dude. story by or <laughs> yeah, premise, the premise by. How did he get... Well, I don't want to ask how anybody got hmm. the way they did, but... <laughs> <clears throat> it's going to be a little interesting to kind of examine Lithgow's performance here because the word is it was originally supposed to be Christopher Walken but then he bowed out at the last minute for some unknown reason well I can't think of what else he would have been doing at the time it wasn't anything big I was looking at 93 what was I looking even at? I was looking at the cinematographer I didn't look at Walken for this time uh, I, I think Lithgow is a fine choice. <clears throat> He's clearly way better at dramatic heel than he is anything comedy, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, he had just done uh, Ricochet with Denzel, so he was playing a little... That was a little of a weird one to me, but he, he was still trying to play a little bit of a thriller villain to a certain degree, but... And did like Racing King with the Paul Mon, so he's trying to edge towards a little bit more evil roles, if you want to get that right. But, uh. I'm walking to True Romance this year. He did. He did a couple other films that I never heard of. He did Wayne's World 2, which I don't know if he's in it that much. Walking? Yeah. No, I don't think he's got a major role. No. I haven't seen that one in 20 years. Right. What, when True Romance came out, what month was that? That was September, so this came out at the end of May, so... Maybe he took the other, maybe went on True Romance instead? I don't know. <clears throat> I can't imagine turning down a lead in an action movie with Stallone to do a bit role in True Romance. He's got that fantastic scene with Hopper, but you don't know that until you shoot it. Uh, he's got like two other scenes in the whole film, so it's not like it would take that much of a... Right, couldn't you do both? Right. I'd, I'd imagine this one had longer post-production because of the visual effects. True, true, true Romance came out three months later. I don't know. Well, there's no saying when they were shot. Either. Right, I'm just trying to figure out what the idea of timelines would have been. They would have interfered that much if he decided that, or just maybe he just decided at the last minute he didn't really like the role or didn't want to be up in the Italian mountains or something like that shooting this. I don't know what it was. Oh, Lith shit. Lithgow just said he got, he, he got called up and brought in the last minute. He had to kind of workshop the role with Rennie Harlan and trying to figure out what nationality he wanted for, so he just drew on a, a British accent, which I guess... It's we as not, Americans can't really judge what anyone else's British accent is when they're trying to put it on. Well... Some others are like, hmm? Some, some actual Brits are probably like, hmm, maybe not quite so well. I, well, here's it's the thing, It's all about the though. dialect and the language. Right, there's so many... just slapping it on there. There's so many different dialects that... <clears throat> You know, you kind of... Cockney or Welsh or whatever the case is. Well, there's all different kinds. There's probably I mean, about a good dozen of them at least. So, I don't know if even they, the Brits, yeah, um, can judge too much. Because you can always just go, oh, well, he's from Manchester. Yeah, sure, yeah. You know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah oh, that's West Birmingham End. Birmingham or right, something. That, that's West End, right. East, whatever, East End, I don't know what the fuck. Somebody over there help us out. I mean, Jason Statham doesn't sound anything like Michael Caine, but they're all both from England. Right. Well, 
you know, Stephen King doesn't sound anything like the folks in Alabama either, but they're uh -huh. both from the United States, oh, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Roll Tide to the My Friends in Alabama. <laughs> no offense. Oh yeah, by the way, your trillion dollars is missing. <laughs> Well, it was. Mm -hmm. Now, this begs the question, mm -hmm. if they're unexchangeable denominations, why what do they... What use are they anyway? What, what, why do they exist? Yeah. What's the use for them? It's like a lot of people just like making up jargon that seems like it seems like you know what you're talk, talking about, but it's not really anything. It's like uh, you didn't get a Secret Service agent and a mountain climber and a freaking helicopter fly, pilot all right in the script. They ain't no fucking shit. Right. They weren't even consulted. No. This is the equivalent, I guess, of somebody stealing a priceless work of art right because you can't sell it no you can't display it no you can't tell anybody that you have it right. <laughs> so <laughs> why what are you doing <laughs> yeah 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 This, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand this is kind of the whole premise, is their relationship. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of over it already. We're 20 minutes, 30 minutes in, mm. and it's like, well, okay, yeah, I get it. You're angry. He's guilty. I, I'm just, I'm, I, mean, I it get was, it. It was, it was also the fact that Rooker's character was, was telling when they're up on the, up on the, the wire or whatnot. Yeah, you just. I'm going to send my. I'm going to send my harness out to her. Don't don't come onto the cable because it's not graded for two people. So he was trying to tell him, don't do that. I have well, another alternative, and then he was going out there anyway. I have another alternative. Don't do the setup you did and just hover sure. or land on the rock you were on. Uh, yeah. Look at this shot. Holy yeah. shit. Wouldn't this be a plot twist right now yeah. if, he, if Stallone died yeah. 40 minutes in? Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? Sure. See, that's the kind of shit that I love. A swerve. It's like Seagal, an executive decision. You think he's a star. It's like, no, he's dead in like 30 minutes. Well, Kurt yeah. Russell movie now. I, right. Like, what now if... That's a Michael Rooker movie. Here. What there if? You go. Right. Yeah. Like, I'd buy it. Wouldn't that be amazing? You go into the movie thinking, oh, this is a Stallone. I'm going to come out happy in the end. Everything, like, everything yeah. is great. Roses. <laughs> and then he just dies in the middle. <laughs> God damn it. I want to write something like that. <laughs> You'd never get anybody famous to play it, though, mm -hmm. right? Because they would always be like saying, I'm not the star. I want to be the other one. Yeah. Like, if that were the case, Stallone would want to play the, the Rooker character. Yeah. 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 I don't know. You check your ego at the door. I'm giving you all this money. Uh, Look at that scar. I love geez. it. I don't know if I buy it being British, but maybe. Yeah. It's all. It almost sounds like. Uh, what was our guy from Lethal Weapon Two? Uh, uh, Josh Acklin. Yeah. With the South African. The South African. Yeah. One hundred million dollars. So if it's double, give or take, mm. so roughly two hundred million. Mm. 
Okay, wait. Yeah, I like the I, tension I, between the two of them. I need to do some math right now. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to get out my regular calculator. Get your abacus. <laughs> So a hundred million. Whoops. You can't Oops. type worth a damn right now. No, I can't. I'm thinking about the movie and I can't type. Hundred million divided by a thousand dollar bills is a hundred thousand actual bills. Bills, yeah. Okay, and now they're wrapped in in hundred stacks. Sure. Okay. So We'll divide that by a hundred. A thousand. Right. Whoops. Nope. So yes, a thousand. So there's a thousand bundles of one thousand dollar bills. Mm -hmm. Divided I'm, by. I'm not sure. Yeah. Would, would that would that fit in three suitcases? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I don't either. Hmm. I feel like you'd need more suitcases. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is the way my brain works. No, <laughs> you're hell. So the entire premise is they want to, they kidnap these guys. So they, they can climb up to where they need to, to re retrieve the, the, the cases. Be the beacons that yeah. are in the case. Okay. And while I was incorrectly dialing ones and zeros on my calculator, mm -hmm. all of that was going down. Is there uh, they've got some sort of like beacon honing device yeah. to tell where they are? Yeah, Mustache has got, got a big old tech console thing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He doesn't always have the accent either. He is way better as a bad guy. Mm -hmm. I am not I don't know if I can think of one comedic role that he's ever been in that I thought was great. Hmm. And then there was, you know, his role on Dexter, hmm. which the first season was like this phenomenon and it was amazing. And then they kind of trailed off. Hmm. They brought him in in season four to be the main antagonist. He hmm. was a serial killer. Okay. And... He stole the show. Okay. Like, he might have won awards for it. It was, you know, serial killer. Uh -huh. Let's let go. Amazing. Amazing. What move it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> like. You won't give him no gear. You're making him free, free climb it. I guess I understand not wanting to give him an axe and a pick. Right. And, you know, all a this. weapon and everything, but. She looks an awful lot um, hmm. like the gal, I don't remember her name, never do, that was on 24 and is married to Xander Berkeley. Hmm, I and I can't remember can't remember what that actress's name is. Sarah something or other. But, I don't know, I think it looks like her. <clears throat> I'm cold just watching this. I guess that's the I guess that's the idea, right? Sarah Clark. Sarah Clark, yes, that's it. Okay, yeah. I believe they met on the set of twenty four. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Okay, let's take a look. Are there three hundred and thirty three bundles in this? I was right about the hundred thousand dollars, though. Hmm. 
Again, what are you going to do with this money? <clears throat> and in in that sense, it almost kind of ruins the movie. Yeah, that, that whole line about non was it non exchangeable denominations? Right. I right. mean, let, let me look something up. All right. Let me see if this is a thing that has an explanation. Yeah, keep shooting at all that snow. That that's a good idea. That was a hell of a shot right there. Oops. Como se dice avalanche in mm -hmm. Espanol. Mm -hmm. He really threw that he threw it. Weird. I'm so not finding. Oh. Any, I'm so not finding anything under non-exchangeable denominations. I get that they were, you know, it was like a test or something. I forget what they said. They explained something at the beginning. I don't know. This is check the synopsis. But I don't understand. Right, like if if it's unusable money. You know, what's the difference? There it goes, by the way. <clears throat> if... If I were to be walking along the forest and all of a sudden a $1,000 bill rained down on mm -hmm. me, I would imagine that it was fake. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I would try to cash it. Not cash it, it is cash. You know, exchange it. You take it to a bank, the bank's never gonna have ever seen it before. You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure when that thing was discontinued then. I don't know if it was ever in existence. Well, I don't know. You're looking it up to see if that ever actually existed. Oh, well, I know it existed. Oh, see I didn't. I don't even think they make a 500 anymore, do they? No. It was a $10,000 bill at one time. For what? I don't know. I'm trying to... F let me finish with reading stuff. $1,000 bill. The $1,000 bill was discontinued in 1969. So what is this? Well, 1993. No, well, if they're saying these are $1,000 bills, that, are they saying this is $1,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. $1,000 bill? Yes. It doesn't exist. How can they be inventing <clears throat> stuff that discontinued 20 well, years before? that's the idea, is that it was new or experimental or whatever. It was the, the only ones of its kind. Hmm. I don't know what they were going to do with it, but maybe they were bringing it back. We got, we got to take a look at these bills the next time they pop up. I need, I need some clarification, because if they stopped minting them in 1969, why would they be minting, printing new ones in 1993? Well, I don't remember what the explanation was at the beginning. Well, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. But, uh, well, They're we clearly can, at the mint trying to transport this stuff somewhere. We can't rewind it, Nick. I know that. <laughs> I had my headphones, I could watch my digital copy and figure oh, out. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... That's what we get for not necessarily reading all the words and instead talking to you folks. Uh, look at that. Jesus. That's a real person on a real mountain. Yeah. There was a little bit of a digital effect extension on this thing, but damn me if I can tell. Yeah, I can't tell the difference. <clears throat> He wasn't at the rock wall at the YMCA, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Now, I guess our midpoint is 
Well, maybe not. I was going to say when she says, take me out there. Maybe it was when he got a hold of the money and it flew into the ether. Hmm. Yeah, the whole point at the beginning was that these bills were the only ones of their kind. Which makes sense if they were discontinued, you know, 25 years earlier. All of that is in the snow. Hmm. I think Stallone is doing a great job of playing hypothermia almost. right yeah so oh here we go do we think that by getting to the case and taking that 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 would save hell hmm. like I don't understand their logic either I looked up the shooting script Okay. So here's a line from Travers, our turncoat guy. Okay. Early on, the whole thing where it's like, okay. Good move, by the way, looking up the script. These bills aren't even in circulation. The $1,000 bills we're transporting are only used for an international banking exchange. Okay. That's what the shooting script says. That sounds right. That sounds familiar. So everything else in this thing sounds exactly like the rest of the entire scene we saw. Think armored cars can be hijacked, trains can be derailed, but nobody can get get us in flight. Yep, he did say that. Mm -hmm. Now, how did they find this without the beacon? And also, which president is on the front? <clears throat> Great cinematography here. Oh, yeah, great shot. I mean, all around, really. Every scene. Even oh, yeah. this is beautiful. Yeah, I mean. Point the light in the right direction and you got the scenery. Yeah, every which way. It doesn't matter which way you point. Yeah. Right? Just turn the camera and you're good. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it like a uh, heat-seeking kind of thing? Well, no, because they have those little devices on every single oh, one I got of it. the I cases, got it. so that's what's tracking everything. I like that they spent time making a snowman. That was fun. <laughs> that's cute. Here yeah. we go. Let's Maybe we can get a... Grover Cleveland. <laughs> now, is Grover Cleveland the one that was on the, the picture you found? I didn't can't find a picture. Oh, you just read about it. All right, let me see if I can. Let me. I can find one. But that was. A, I. I wasn't looking closer. That was a thousand, right? Yeah. They don't exist no more. I know. It didn't exist at the time. The interesting thing is is that the article I was reading is like, okay, since they're out, I've been out of circulation for so long and out of print. They might be actually worth more than what their face value is now because they're so rare. Well, yes, although I don't know if it's legal to buy and sell U.S. currency. Yeah. For. All right, it's a little, right. little hairy. On it's that weird. Um, yeah, I'm looking up photos of the actual ones, and yeah, it is. It's Grover Cleveland, so they just used. 
you know, they just probably, I don't know, they were, Google didn't exist, but yeah. I'm sure somebody has one somewhere, the U.S. Mint, if they were actually filming. I'm it, sure it's something at the library could tell you. The Denver Mint probably has knowledge yeah. of stuff that's been printed in the last 30 mm-hmm. years. I'm also curious who is on the five hundred dollar bill. Hmm. Or the ten grand. Or, let me look at the ten. This is unbelievable <laughs> that this actually exists. Boy, it's it's blurry. Hold on, I got a different one. I can't read who that is. Somebody that I don't know. O H A B E? I don't know who that person is. Mm. Sorry, we're just, we're not entertaining right now. We're Googling things. That's not that's bad on our. Mm. I'm sorry, you don't want to listen to us Googling. <clears throat> so, I apologize. Let's get back to the movie. Temp, negative 12 Celsius. All right. <laughs> so, that's about zero. Fahrenheit for those of you in the United States. Those of you who operate under Celsius, I have no idea what the fuck that means. I don't understand Celsius. Much like you don't understand Fahrenheit. Selwyn B. Chase. How did I not read that correctly? Resigned from the Senate to become President Abraham Lincoln's Treasury Secretary in 1861. So that's... Well, it looks like... Put someone from the Treasury on the bill. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I guess it says it's Chase now. I needed my readers. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's a good line. (laughs) I like that. That sounds like a Stallone line. (laughs) I like this. Not everyone's completely on the same page. Everyone's kind of clawing and scratching each other. Well, yeah. a little little personality conflict. You do need it though, because yeah. on the whole, it's a little thin. Like yeah. the story's thin. Yeah, a lot happens, but the actual plot is very basic. Yeah. And, and these guys ain't had, had much substance to it either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if you couldn't just take out their entire storyline. Right. And they're they're, another... they're, they're kind of there just to have a little bit of a collateral damage later on. Hmm. So, yeah, you basically have to have some sort of infighting. Mm-hmm. Good catch. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many takes that took. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are thousands. Intriguing. There's a Stallone line if I ever heard it. <laughs> Stallone is a walking... Jesus, that's bad humor, I know. <laughs> it's also a Stallone line. He's a walking dad joke. <laughs> Can you imagine burning all that cash? You know, 333 <laughs> million whatever it is. Yeah. I like his character, man. Yeah. It, and he's kind of a bullish jerk in the entire makeup here. Well, it's funny because he has to play both sides, right? Right. Like, if he... He has to be on Team Lithgow right. to show... Um, and his value. Right. Yeah. But then he also has to prove himself so that those guys don't get him either. Right. 
You know, it's like, because he fucked up the whole deal. Right, right. So, because Lithgow's character, he, he's, he's trying to play things a little bit more, not quite bullish to a certain degree. He's trying to play things not not so much subtle to a degree, but he's trying to be fin- have a finesse to it. Less violence, more persuasion to a certain degree. <clears throat> right. Well, Travers is being a little bit, he's being aggressive and everything, and he's being to the point because he doesn't want to dick around no more. Well, he also knows that if he screws up again, right. he's dead. Yeah. There we go. Now, there really is no need for any of this. <clears throat> no. You could have eliminated their entire sequence. Yeah, yeah. From the car scene to the tent scene to this scene. Yeah. And just said, nah, we don't need that. Yeah. I wonder if that was screenwriter or story by or premise by. Hmm. Based on characters by. <laughs> How many times, like, you repack your parachute and mm-hmm. then, like, climb up and jump again? Yeah. Is that the idea? I guess. Where's your car? I actually think it'd be kind of cool if they shot the parachute. Mm hmm. And then he plunged yeah. to his death. That yeah. Love that. Mm-hmm. Good look. Now you have a bigger target. Shoot the parachute. Not the finish flag for Rennie. Is that what that is? Yeah. I think that's what someone... I think it is. Actually, yeah, it is. It's Finland. The Blue Cross. (laughs) And not the Blue Shield. No. (laughs) He's just now getting around to calling him a murdering... (laughs) A murderer? I can't get over some of these scenes. No, oh, the shots, yeah, the scenery. I mean, how? <sighs> like the Omnimax at the Museum of Science and Industry, man. Can you just All imagine? Like, okay, we're going to film a scene up there. Mm-hmm. Everybody get in the helicopter. Get to the chopper. <laughs> and then we're going to drop you off up there. You're going to walk along like the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> yes. And then we're going to pick you up and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Just, again, the cost on this thing has got to be. How much did they the pay in they jet go, fuel? The fact they did go over well over budget on the whole thing, and the fact that Caracol was running out of money, they actually had like a week or so where they couldn't pay anyone, so the production stopped running. Ah, it's like ECW <laughs> or New Line. They they almost ran out of money on Elm Street. Well, they were barely a, a company barely anyway. Anything yeah, as it was so. Right. They got bailed out by Smart Egg in the UK or whatever right, it was. Yeah. <laughs> and like, oh yeah, sure, we'll give you video distribution, whatever, yeah. just give us some cash. Yeah. There they are. <laughs> that's uh da, 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 da. Right, that's Frodo and that's Sam and that's Aragorn. Yeah, you got it. The little fat one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember his name. Gim Gimli? Gimli. <laughs> I love Gimli. I haven't watched those in a long ass time. Mm. I mean, I'm due for a rewatch. You just watched them last year, right? Like a uh, Thanksgiving. I, I, wa- watched, I watched Fellowship. I didn't get around to the other oh, okay. ones. I was watching my 4K set. And... Yeah, I've only got the Blu-rays. I haven't upgraded that one. Yeah, when they were, they had a sale, so I grabbed it. Maybe I'll do that soon. Just a 12-hour marathon, straight through. Did that. I did, I've done that twice, and it was a little much. Yeah, I imagine it would be. Especially since I'm watching the extended version. Well, yeah, that's the only way. <laughs> yeah. Four the brain hours gets a little mushy by Return of the King. Well, Return of the King is the weakest of the three, yet it's the one that won fucking Best Picture. <laughs> Don't get me started. 
<laughs> Back to Cliffhanger. <laughs> Speaking of which, did this one win anything? I don't think so. Let me see. <laughs> Humor me, goddammit! There was a novelization. Of course there was. Oh, bats, sure. Yeah. We're going to be uh, covering some bats later on that are rabid. <laughs> yeah, apparently all this was uh, digital effects. and The bats? Yeah. yeah. Like, did they shot pretty, bats and then they overlapped it? Or they did, did whatever they did, just made them all CGI. I don't know. They did a pretty fantastic job. Those look like real bats. I can't tell. That's what happens when you don't abuse the CGI. Do a lot of practical stuff, then you do a couple of pieces with the digital effects, and then you can spend more time, more money on the digital effects to make them look good. But well, it's interesting because get this progression effects. Okay, this thing comes out that like I think it's like two weeks later you get Jurassic Park. Oh, okay. And then it's the last action hero after that, which gets swallowed up in the box office. Yeah. But the weird thing is. You know, this is TriStar and Last Action Heroes Columbia. It's still under the same Sony umbrella. Why would you put out two action films with tentpole stars three weeks apart at the box office? That doesn't make much sense to me. Especially, yeah. especially when Schwarzenegger was telling him, you really should push this back because Jurassic Park is going to eat us alive. So I've, Jurassic I've, I've Park. That weird. Jurassic Park ate everything alive. Well, yeah. I don't know if anybody knew... How big it was going to be? Mm. Uh, well, Cliffhanger, it was nominated oh, for Worst Picture, Worst Supporting Actor, John Lithgow, Worst Supporting Actress, Janine Turner, and Worst Screenplay at the Golden Raspberries. Of course, all right. <laughs> Ebert gave it three out of four. Yeah, I thought Ebert liked it. But fuck Ebert, so, you know, whatever. Hate him. <laughs> And no, nothing about like they want any visual, got any visual effects, or anything. I almost got run over one time by Roger oh, Ebert. Yeah. No, it wasn't nominated for three Academy Awards: Best Sound, Best Sound Effects Editing, and Best Visual Effects. All lost to Jurassic Park. Well, okay. Because sure, yeah, sure. No, no one had a chance. Right. It's like the Titanic or Return of the King years. Everything goes to Spielberg. Everything goes away. That, that. right. Schindler's List. Yeah. Like, he, everything he won Artistic that year... Artistic awards go to Schindler's, the technical awards go to Jurassic Park, you anything got else, it. there's nothing left except, yeah. like, original song. Let's see, 93, that would have been, what, Aladdin? Oh, probably. No, that was 91? No. I'm bad on the timeline on the... Anyway. Yeah, Roger Ebert uh, almost almost ran me over one time. You're going to make me look it up. At the uh, Chicago Film Critics Awards one year. It was over. We were all going to the bathroom and getting our coats, and I turn around, and here comes this big barreling man mm. who I had to jump out of the way of because he was coming at me like a freight train. <clears throat> I was like, excuse me. He didn't seem to give a shit. I've never liked that guy. There we go. 66th, 66th Academy Awards. I have to figure out best song now since we brought it up. I can get there. I'm going to kick myself if it's something that I should know. Oh, Philadelphia, right? Street, Philadelphia, streets of Philadelphia. Yep, Bruce Springsteen. Yep. Tom Hanks. So, yeah. Um, I, it, Bruce. Came, it came to me right before. Yeah, Philadelphia. We talked about Springsteen eventually on this channel. It's not the one you think of, though. <laughs> yeah, Springsteen coming up later this summer. <laughs> the one with titties. <laughs> <laughs> What, you ask? Stay tuned. <laughs> That's a good effect right here. Yeah. The crumbling. Let's feel like it right out of Rambo 3. He, he's, he's breaking through the cave and the big, like, muscle dude is waiting for him at the top. Yep. Cave diving in that one too. He likes a splunk. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
prolonging bat caves. He could have been Bruce Wayne. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> you could have been Two Face, maybe. I could see it. Droopy lip on one side, you know. Come on. Okay. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This guy here would have made a better Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I'm not opposed to a Black Wayne. Black Wayne. Yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to a Black Bond either. I know that's been a topic recently. Mm. We still don't have a new James Bond. No. Give me the money. He doesn't have the money on him. He thinks he's carrying around in a backpack somewhere. This uh, close-up doesn't look very good in 4K. Oh, mm. oh, Jesus! Oof. Ow. I mean, he'd have broken bones. Come mm -hmm. on. Nice depth of field shot. I like it. How do you feel about uh, that kind of suspension bridge? I wouldn't want to go over it. You wouldn't do it? I don't know, man. What do you I, think? I don't know if I go fast or slow, man. I have no clue. I, I, I'd be okay. I, I could do it. Hmm. There's all kinds of, you know, like... What's that? Was it Temple of Doom where there's oh, the yeah. big rope bridge? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I'd mind it. I think I could do that. I say that now, sitting here in your chair. Sure. <laughs> Nowhere near the fucking mountain. I do like mountains, though. Mm. Rocky Mountain National Park is one of like the most beautiful places I've been. And now, granted, I've not been to like the Grand Canyon mm -hmm. or you know, Yosemite or any of that, but man, Rocky Mountain National Park mm -hmm. is cherry. Mm. Highly recommend if anybody's out in that Denver area, about an hour and a half north. Not even. Mm. You can't win rock! <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's not what we're doing. No bullets, bitch, is a great line. That That's a Steve line right there. <laughs> I wrote that one, sorry. <laughs> He's whipping his ass. A little drop kick. I like this guy, man. Yeah, I do too. Even though he tried to drop kick him, and everybody knows that Stallone's best friend is Hulk Hogan, <laughs> and Hulk Hogan would teach him how to do a couple of moves, right? <laughs> oh yeah. This has got to be a sound stage, right? Oh yeah, it definitely looks like it. I can't imagine not. I know that, like these kinds of stalactites and such exist but yeah. you can't touch them like because it ruins the they're like living organisms almost okay. and like the oils on your hands screw up the okay so like you i guess you can but yeah. what i'm saying is i feel like if this was a national park or something right. they, they no, wouldn't no. let you do it yeah so they, chances are it's fake and yeah there's a little ultimate warrior action yeah and there's a little jason Voorhees mm -hmm. action I like it. I like it. Mm. I don't think there's ever been a Stallone movie where he didn't have a bloody face and said, I'm all right. Oh. <laughs> mm. I, I feel like every single one he gets beat up. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, what do we got there? 
C4? C4. Oh. I'll blow it. I got excited. I thought it was something good like mm. cocaine. <laughs> now that you're transporting three case, briefcases full of cocaine, you would have been all on board with all everything. 100%. Sign me up. $100 million worth of cocaine. At least you can exchange that. (laughs) (laughs) Five minutes. Are you sure about that five minutes? Let's find out how accurate this is. Mm. Nah, it's all right. I won't do it. Just look at the time stamp. Yeah, there you go. All right, got it. Now, I don't know if I would want to get into a fight on the suspension no, bridge. No, fuck no. You know, it's like a scaffold match or something. <laughs> God damn, whoever came up with that idea for a match is a fucking lunatic. I don't know who came up with the idea. I know it, was, it wasn't made famous until 86, you know, Night of the Skywalkers. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it had to have been done before then. Mm. Because if not, then it was our friend, the American Dream. Hmm. And I don't buy that. Hmm. <laughs> you got much of a choice. Yeah, we jumped yeah, a little bit. We, we, we jumped about two and a half minutes here. <laughs> oh, well. That's what we call Titan Time. Yes. <laughs> Titan time, for those WWF fans, are when you cheat the two minutes in the Royal Rumble yes. and you send the person early. Yes. I can't believe all these people did these actual stunts on an actual uh. mountainside. <clears throat> Oof. Those are real people. Yes. On a real mountain. On a real mountain. I don't know if that's our stars. Those are probably the stunt no. people. The one million dollar insurance policy guy. Yeah, something like that. In cinematic fashion, that really should have broken right on the Mm -hmm. last... Yeah, there it is. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. I've seen this movie before. Mm -hmm. Look at the veins, man. Jump. Yeah, might as well jump. Uh Uh-oh. You bang. Uh, yeah, that's such a great multi-part piece of suspense there. It's like the ropes, you know, the rope's going to break, the thing's going to blow up, or you're not going to reach the ledge. Like, right, we're recreating every- the opening scene. Right. We're going to drop her. Right, right. Really, really good stuff. The, the clock is ticking. Mm-hmm. Cut the blue wire. No, yeah. no, cut the red wire. <laughs> we got a Rennie Harlan explosion. Mm-hmm. We got Frank. You can definitely see where all this money went on the budget. Oh, yeah. There's a gigantic Desert Eagle for you. Every action film in the 90s had someone with the Desert Eagle. He's really giving it to him, oh, too. Yeah. He's, he's going to make sure that leaves a, a mark on his face. Yeah, he's putting a boot to his throat, too, like old Jake Roberts or something. I like it. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Ah. Oh. Coal miner's glove match. Actually, this is more reminiscent <laughs> of the... Uh, 
the Vader, uh, what is it, Dark Castle of Fear or whatever oh, the hell with Lord. Sting? <laughs> oh, my Lord. White Castle. It was the White Castle of Fear. That's what of it was. Of course, you got to brand it. <laughs> What do you mean, what are you doing? Who would react that way? Yeah. I will say I like the uh, cunning nature of this gang. Yeah. And their willingness and successfulness, success rate, mm -hmm. at coming up with fake stories to lure out their, the, sure. the team. Yeah. Because they've done it at least twice now. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Mm -hmm. Great reaction out of Rooker. Oh, yeah. He's A-plus this whole film, man. What I really like is that the only noise is the chopper in the background. Mm -hmm. It does some really good sound design in this whole thing. That was one that it was nominated for, right? Sound? Yeah. So like earlier when you had the X Games guys, and they start and they're doing slow motion and the firing and whatnot, but they don't—they're not focusing on that. They're—they're they're slowing it down and, and kind of pulling all the sound effects out. They're just playing with the music. Really inspired stuff. I mean, despite whatever went haphazard with the original cut, which would have been Rennie's original DJ mandated cut, still can put together, man. Who built this bridge? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Great. Oh, that's a shot right there. Unbelievable. That's a one take. Oh, yeah. You can't do that again. No. Look at that shit. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. That's a great line. It's all great dynamics, man. It's like one of those Viewmaster things, right? Yeah. Where you put in the little wheel and mm -hmm. you clicky clicky and mm -hmm. it does the. It's a nice prop they designed there. It's got a. The bulk of it feels like it's a military type of tech got a real like <clears throat> in device like animated screen and everything like that they're not superposing it they have it like programmed in there smart stuff it's a nice little twist of events here. right there we go <laughs> I guess that is the uh, sign of a true psychopath is uh -huh. that he's willing to sacrifice anybody oh, on... yeah. so it's in his own best interest now now what good does that do there oh okay it's a good tit for tat you're gonna fuck me over, I'm gonna fuck you over. Adds to his lethality, his his level of threat. And it adds to his share of the take. Yeah. Because there's one fewer person. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
I feel like Hal's dead no matter what. <laughs> I can't imagine that they have any sort of... Look at this. Man. You can see the clouds coming right at you. Just create a whole reel of all the scenery shots in the whole film. Just give me a whole whole freaking thing. Put it up on a fucking Omnimax. Including this. Look at this. We're on it. <clears throat> You know, that might have been like a composite yeah. shot. Yeah, I think you're right. The way that it, when he landed on that piece there, it kind of bounced. Yeah, there's a little... I was like, well... There's something a little bit... That looks like a painting telltale. almost. Maybe like a matte... <clears throat> yeah. A bit of a matte painting or something. Yeah, probably like a digital composite on this one too. They give it the scope. Unlike this, which is actual footage. Oh, yeah. So, I can see why it's nominated for visual effects. Doing a hot job of it. Well, the visual effects are of it's they're seamless. Of. Yes, aside from those blue screen shots from the, the back of the plane earlier, everything's looking fa- phenomenal. There's two cases there. So there were four altogether? No, there... There were only three, so I guess, I guess that was just... They broke open or something? Oh, is that like yeah, the top half, and, lid, top yeah. half and bottom yeah, half? Yeah, broke okay. open. What is that? Now a squirrel comes out with a gun. No. At least they've done a good job of having everybody kind of on edge of everybody. Yeah. At any given point. Right. <clears throat> you know, there's there's tension even with contention in the ranks. Yeah. Dissension, yeah. contention. The birds flying in the background. Uh. That's great. And it's giving everyone a lot of character. The, the dialogue is very... Kind of a vibrance to it, to a certain degree. And that, no, one's, no one's lines are coming across as flat or cliche. Except or... Stallone's. <laughs> huh. Ow. I mean, Rooker's being given a whole swell of different things to kind of chew into a little bit. Yeah. Isn't this guy British? Yeah. He wouldn't call it soccer. No. Oh, there goes the knee. Ah, Jesus. The bad knee. Of course it's the bad knee. Fell getting out of a hot tub. Mm. Whatever the hell. <laughs> Twisted it. I don't know. Hmm. Mm. You're just going to kick him off the mountain? Well, he said to do it quietly. I guess that's true. Yeah. Just punt him. Yeah, just got get down. A, get a running start. No, look at this backdrop. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> that's the commentary. Look at the cedar. Not a bad day at work, right? Oh, shit, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. That's a Stallone line. Oh yeah. That's that's a great bit. <laughs> well, especially because he thinks it's the other one. That oh we're yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> Season's over, asshole. (laughs) 
<laughs> that prop ended up in Planet Hollywood or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's I don't even know what it is. Like in real life. Yeah. It says it's very well constructed. It feels very authentic to whoever you'd imagine it to be. Now it would just be an app on a phone. Right. It wouldn't be as interesting. Oh. I was kidding about the squirrel. <laughs> How are you going to shoot a bunny? Come what? on. <laughs> Although, I will say, there's... <laughs> My favorite restaurant in New Orleans mm. puts rabbit in their jambalaya. Oh, boy. It's fucking fantastic. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, just <laughs> love it. <laughs> And in an interesting turn of events, Travers here yeah. could pivot to be the main pi villain. Pivot, well, right, but he could also pivot back to being a hero in the eyes of the government. Uh -huh. Yeah, like none of it ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the way you're almost kind of rooting for him to a degree. Right, right. He's at least able to call Quaylen's bullshit to a degree. Like some <clears throat> psychopathic nut job or whatnot. It's like, fuck this guy. It's all just, uh, it's a circle jerk again, yeah, right? It's right. just around and around. And yeah. He's with him. He's against him. He's yeah. fighting for his life. He's right. turning his against him. He, like right, taking right. the kitchen, taking control, <laughs> get losing the lead, <laughs> calling him out. Yeah, like it's he's actually the most interesting character in the, yeah, mo yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, Travers. Yeah, I think this was one of the uh, the best they uh, reshot because it just came off way too ridiculous. Him jumping like him. God knows how many feet across a gigantic chasm. Meanwhile, we did this instead. Now he should have broken mm. ribs and a broken leg and a broken sure. everything. That's a sound stage. Yeah, that snow kind of gave way a little bit. Right. A bounce. Uh, the snow looks different when it's fake. Yeah, a little clumpy. <laughs> clumpy. That's a great nickname. Oh, she thinks it's Frank. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not Frank, sweetheart. That's not Quaylen, either. <laughs> that's a stunt guy that's supposed to look like Quaylen? <laughs> not, not terribly well. This is definitely a set. Yeah, this looks fake as shit. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like a Bond villain set. <laughs> yeah. 1968. Yeah. There's Dr. No. Oh no. Uh oh. He's under the water now. I gotta time this one. 
56, 57, 58. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> this goes back to my uh, <laughs> hatred of underwater scenes uh, that we discussed thoroughly in Lethal Weapon 4 when Mel Gibson is underwater for, mm. I don't know, six, seven, eight minutes. <laughs> sure it seemed like it. <laughs> Playing all in slow motion, I'm sure. Mm. Nice. I like that. I like that. He goes under. Mm. Mm -hmm. All know, right. Only good 50 seconds yeah, underwater. Un less than a minute. Now, it's tipping on the on the edge of it here. But he's also in water that is freezing Hyper cold. Right. Which like ruins you instantly. Mm -hmm. You're not able to do anything. Function, no. Yeah. Well, he's not going to come in. Mhm. <laughs> He's underwater. Take a swim to Arizona is a great line because that's where the river goes. Okay. Does the money still exist even? I don't know what happened to that last. Last we saw, it was by the yeah, rabbit. Yeah, it's a ways away from here. Well, yeah, well, yeah he was he was put it in the uh, duffel bag. Oh, okay. The amount of double crossing and mm -hmm. like, oh, it's almost over. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Oh, it's almost over. It does get to be a little much for me. It, it, the, I, I was, it was about, I don't know, a little past the hour mark when I was watching it the other day. It's like, it does feel a little, the film feels like it's a little directionless at a certain point in time. It doesn't know exactly what regularly the next purpose in the ne in the story is at this at certain points in time yeah because i was trying to think like there's not really a, like a again definitive midpoint thing anywhere it just kind of keeps going action sequence to action sequence until something else converges somewhere so. right but there's just like there's always one more double cross yeah. and one more near death and one yeah. more almost this yeah and then oh we got a plot <laughs> twist here and it's not like there's never anything happening right there's almost too much happening, but yet not enough. Right. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah Throw it to, up. Yeah, trying to trying to picture walking in this performance like I, it'd be a completely different performance. I really. Yeah. I can't slot them in when when in the same way it's being portrayed. I think I can do it. I I feel like I can visualize it. I don't like it as much. I don't like it as much. No, I don't. I'm not. I don't. I mean, I, I walking to do a villain role like fucking hell. Right. I just. Mm, walking is a, a better different style. It's he such is a, a better style. Right. Walking's a better villain in general. Yeah. But walking's a lot more of a physical animated type of guy. This is a much more reserved performance. So it would be. a Almost on a completely different shade of the whole thing. I, I think Walken would be better facially, mm -hmm. like yeah. angry face. Yeah. Um, he acts with his face better than Lithgow does. Yeah. In my opinion.
I thought this didn't have much fuel left in it. Yeah, it's just doing a lot of hovering around they didn't have, mountaintops. They didn't have time to go stick it around yeah. until they needed to, and then, oops, right, it's a little... never mind. That's, that's not Lithgow again. <laughs> no, that doesn't look anything like him. No. Oh, there we go. Whoop, duck. <laughs> This is the second movie in a row we've done with uh, heli helicopter-like stunts. Yeah. Uh-oh. He doesn't know he's connected. Mm -hmm. He's going to get a little whoopsie. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yet one more near death here, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is a hell of a stunt. Yeah. You got one stunt guy driving the chopper. The guy hanging off. The guy hanging off, right. How many bullets are in that gun? That's Scarlet. one plus two plus one plus one. <laughs> Not one plus one plus two plus one. Yeah. Uh oh. I like that it didn't blow up immediately there. No. I don't feel like it would. Oh, Jesus Christ. On a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shot. Right, but the birds, I'm telling you, it's the birds that oh. get me. Maybe they're CGI birds, but I love it. That's a real plane on a real mountain. God damn. And the overhead shots are definitely like a rear projection system, but it, that's, like that's, that's on location. I don't know if they're using like a fake mountain front with a... Right, right. Like a crash pad underneath. But hell. Yeah, that that looked fake. They're all matching really damn well. Yeah, you really can't tell the difference. You're doing a better job in these wide shots knowing that it's probably the stunt guys but not showing them quite as well this time. The hair keeping, is different. Keeping their, yeah, the, the hair on, on the Sloan doubles a little telltale, but at least they're trying to keep the faces turned away. There we go. Boom. Yeah. It's about to get real hot, Sloan. <laughs> Heat rises. <laughs> Look at this shot, Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Oh, it's these assholes. Yeah. Well, who are just now showing up. Yeah. And now all is forgiven between these two, like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Did have a kind of feeling like they're even even after they get abducted in, into this entire coercion of Quail and everything, so I felt like there should have been a little bit of tension played between them. 
maybe not overtly, but maybe just a few subtle things here and there. Because it's like when, once the act, the plot kicks in, it's like it's not even a thing anymore. Yeah, I, I feel like it was dismissed to considering the entire premise of the movie is based on that. Yeah, like. Yeah, I don't know. The, yeah. the only reason that they're even in this predicament is right. because Stallone didn't necessarily want to go help his right. former friend. Right. Thor. Played by Thor. I assume that's the dog. I'm assuming, yeah, dog or one of the wolf, wolves or something. No, there was uh, the dog at the beginning at her house. Okay. The Golden Lab. Okay. <clears throat> visual effects there you are Pamela good job yeah look at I mean even this uh, end shot here John Bruno there was, there was covering something recently where I talked about him as a visual effects guy I think it was on uh, Alien vs. Predator he worked on these credits look a little jumpy a little, to me. A little wobbly I don't understand why Greg with two G's is bad. <laughs> Wiley. Yeah, the, this is really... I mean, it's not a great script. No. But I do feel like it's great execution. Execution went a long way on this whole thing. Technical qualities are in high standard. All, all the actors are really putting forth a, a really... Hot effort, I think. Uh, everyone's into doing the characters and the script and everything. I like I said Harry before. Wrecker, Hecker. Sure, Wrecker, Wrecker, Hecker. I sure think that the uh, turncoat guy, whatever his name was, yeah, Travers. Tra yeah, he was the most interesting character. Oh yeah, yeah. of all of them. Yeah, for sure. He created uh, all the kind of conflict turbulence yeah. and everything he is the reason for the movie he's shaking up in, shaking in up the status quo and everything yeah um Stallone I feel like is the least interesting character in this one yeah and what, because they drop the whole thing of the guilt and, and, and the, the remorse and stuff like that it just kind of loses loses that really good weight you had in the first couple of scenes in the film that was giving a character giving a little Emotion for the characters to kind of grapple with it. It just goes right into the action and suspense stuff and really kind of loses the character motivations. Right. Yeah, the the girl was fine. I had yeah. more. I cared more about Frank than I did Stallone. Yeah, Frank Stallone. Well, not <laughs> not, not that Frank Stallone. But he could have been in the movie. He could have done. He, he could have done the original song for the movie. Of course, he could have. It's not like he hasn't done it before. I know. Oh, the plasterers. What do you do, Marco Muzzy? What is your job? Oh, I plaster. What do you plaster? I have no idea. Well, the scaffolders. There you go. There's you guys. Well, yeah, actually. <laughs> Giacchino Apiepolo. <laughs> what is that guy? Deborah Demon Garrison I don't What the fuck? Uh, A lot of Italians on this, on this film. Well, they shot in Italy. Well, that explains it. There you go. Uh, Italian mountains. I guess I didn't realize that that they shot it in Italy. Did you say that at the beginning? Yeah, I did. So, I don't. I, I missed it. These, yeah, these credits are long. These are long, long credits. We got, we got four more. Four minutes more of minutes of credits. Why? Well, let's talk about that sequel they're intending to do. Oh God damn it! <laughs> so it's. I heard it was like a reboot. It's not a direct sequel? Stallone's coming back as the same character. Oh, okay. And, fuck off, what, what was the guy directing this stupid thing? Uh, he, did, he did that Angel Has Fallen, that like third Gerard Butler film after Olympus Has Fallen. I've never like, seen any. That's the highest profile thing he's done. I didn't watch that. I don't know one. any of them. I didn't see that one. He was like, eh, we'll see. Well, they shoot it at a location like this, okay, maybe. What is the plot? <laughs> they have no details released as of yet and it's it's a green light right it's going it's happening that's what it seems like they've got Stallone on board he signed on Stallone is 70 yeah he ain't climbing no mountains man 
Is he going to be like the Frank character? Now he's Frank Stallone? <laughs> he's Frank Stallone. Officially? <laughs> Dickie Bear. Stunt Rigger. So that was a very important man, Mr. Bear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Message to a friend of mine, like, I don't know what someone's going to do. I said, punch a bunch of dudes in the face. <laughs> well, that's all he can do. <laughs> that's what he can do. As long as they don't go with a million fucking pieces of CGI and green screens or whatnot, don't do that. Shoot them yeah. on fucking location. I can't imagine... Find a fucking mountain. There's plenty of them out there. So this one will be screenplay by, story by, like, con- God, con- how many people are based on? Concept by, and then based on characters created by? <laughs> That's going to be a fucking... <laughs> That'll be this four minutes of credits. I think the WGA is in problems now. Jesus this Christ! Thing just started out. <laughs> <laughs> oh God damn it! Well, uh, well, we've got a nice, very solid, substantial Sloan playlist. Got over the top. We got some Rambo, Expendables. I got Cobra in there. We'll add some other stuff eventually. Yeah, we're gonna do the fifth Rambo. We'll get around to Last Blood eventually. We're not climbing all over ourselves for it right now. But Stallone seems to do well for yes. the, for us at the channel yes, here. Yes, it does. Formed by Mind Bomb. Don't know them moves. I don't either. Tapes and compact discs. Ooh. Interesting that this was not released on vinyl because I don't think in '93 they were producing mm, anything no. on vinyl. No. Whereas in 2023, yeah. vinyl would be the first one to come <laughs> out. All Italia. <laughs> Alitalia? <laughs> Rocky Mountain National Park. I put them over without even knowing that they were <laughs> responsible. You know what? I did see Rocky Mountain something on, on their suits. So maybe they were the rescue team for Rocky Mountain okay. National Park. Which doesn't really make any sense. Cause that, there's a nice quote we just passed. They specifically know that the certain harness they used for the opening sequence was specifically altered for that exit sequence. So... It is oh, not faulty. Don't be okay. Got it. Try to protect the, the 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 everything there. It's like okay, we worked for these people to rig it the way it needs to be to make the sequence work. Otherwise, it's a perfectly safe harness. I like that. Yeah, that you that makes me. This shit, that man. really makes me happy. I miss that. Aren't you going to get a lawsuit for someone? It's like you damaged our brand by doing this. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. So. Sure all right, they were guys. Happy enough to give you the stuff and set you up and do all that stuff. So help them out a little. Not a not a unicorn. Not a unicorn. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye.